Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. We are on to items A, City Manager's report on issues raised at prior council meeting. None at this time. We're on to item B, special events applications. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first application before you is from the New Jersey Marathon. They're seeking to do their annual event on April 29th. The next four applications are from the Garden State Film Festival, seeking to use the Senior Center as well as the Council Chambers on March 24th and 25th to show films as part of their event. Next is the Step Up for the Art 5K walk and run on April 14th. The Jersey Shore uh, Jazz Festival <coughs> is seeking to hold their event on June 8th through 10th in Sunset Park. See Here Now Festival would be held uh, September 28th through the 30th, 2018. And the next nine applications are all weddings for the uh, upcoming year. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. You are on to item C. Items to be presented by City Manager Michelle Alonzo. Um, I'm sorry. Michael's fired. Yeah, just came out. Good evening, council members and members of the public. I have two items to present to you tonight. Two of them relate, they relate to the Main Street Redevelopment Plan. We've had a request for an amendment to the Main Street Redevelopment Plan to permit recording studios. Um, the building that um, is specifically a, a tenant, uh, there's a tenant who wishes to occupy a portion of 814 Asbury Avenue with the recording studio, studio. This is a former industrial building and currently has some other uses that can be classified as like industrial. Recording studios are not specifically listed in the redevelopment plan. So I, I'm proposing to put under community shopping zone, which is a, a sub-district in the Main Street redevelopment plan to permit music recording studios. The other item to this amendment is I would also put in the requirement that there has to be some noise attenuation installed <coughs> with a recording studio. And then the last part is to add recording studios and light industrial in the parking standard chart. Because light industrial, when this plan was adopted, was omitted out of the parking standards. Um, so it would be the same as retail services, which would be two spaces per 1,000 square feet as a minimum and a maximum of four spaces per 1,000 square feet. The Main Street Redevelopment Plan has a minimum and a maximum standard. Included in your packets today is a presentation by the applicant who, who is asking for this proposal of municipal council of the recording studio use that they would like to do. It includes their hours of operation and the proposed floor plan. This is just a workshop item for tonight. This is not an ordinance introduction. Does this have to go before the planning board? Yes. Okay, so this is just information only. For tonight, yes. This is. Uh, is this like a taking your temperature? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, yes, it's a workshop item. So, of course, if you have questions and concerns, please ask me. What else is in this building? I believe this is. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the? This might be where the brewery is. Uh, this was the maybe not, but part because it's all the multiple buildings require the flex craft complex. Uh, right, right, right. 
So this is the building of the flex craft complex that faces Asbury Avenue. So is this part of the building where Mr. Lowy does the fundraising for food? That I don't know because I'm I'm unaware of the fundraising for food. Use. Well, there's a business there, so if you could find out if that's the same building. I, I can find out. And who's, who's going to be the owner of this? The tenant. The because tenant. this is well, the I got an attorney. Yes, yes, okay, we got a tenant. Okay. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> it's not the low you can no. no. Okay. No. So then maybe it is a different because this says it's the rear part of the building, the rear part of the flex craft that borders back because they say they're parked into on Sewell Avenue, not Asbury Avenue, which would be the front of the building. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a floor plan included in your packet that. Do I, I could get clarification of this exactly where I thought based on this it was the front of the building, but I can get clarification on it. Okay. It's a women it's a women owned music studio, right? What's Correct. not what's not to like about that? I just wanna know what else is in the building. And that's a good question because I do know that from what I have seen, you know, on the internet that portions of the building are out there for rent. It's being marketed as for rent. You and know, you're dealing with the sound mitigation. Right. I put I put one line under design standards that says that recording studio shall provide physical sound attenuation measures. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So then while I'm opening up the Main Street Redevelopment Plan, one item that has been talked about is to, as part of the parking solution, short-term parking solutions for the city, is to permit valet parking on weekend nights to benefit the CBD. Mike Manzel, the transportation planner, has pinpointed three sites that are realistic in the short term. Two of them are part of the City Hall Transportation Center complex. Should have in your packet a map that shows the locations that would be the receiving lots for, for valet parking. Um, they are one is to the south of the transportation center, where it's currently a parking lot that can accommodate staff cars with an attendant. Another possible location would be behind the transportation center for the parking lot that we own, that could be stacked parking with attendant. Those require amendments to the Main Street Redevelopment Plan to permit valley parking as a second accessory use. The other, the third location that could, is possible is the Hope Academy Charter School site. They have a lot of right. parking that clearly is not in use on the weekend. That would require just an amendment to the regular zoning ordinance. But since we will be opening up the Main Street plan, I want to present to you the idea of the valley parking on City Hall site. City Hall's in the Main Street redevelopment plan area. And we, nice. if we did this, we, we could do it as kind of a trial, obviously, right? See how oh. it works. If it's a disaster, we'll start. Yeah, listen, yes. I think anything that's going to help the parking situation, I'm willing to give a try. But we wouldn't have to open up the Main Street plan if you eliminated two city lots. Right. Uh, I'm against it. Okay. Adding the two city lots because we're already designating them for employees and for res residents. So we're going to be throwing out employees and residents for a valet company? I assumed it was the lots that we don't. No, they're already designated for well, residents and employees. One of them is not, one of them is part of the transportation center. That's what I assumed it was. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. But here, so. we're, we're gonna bring up Mr. Manziel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then if it's not, we'll designate for employees and residents. Because well, no. So all through all the lots at City Hall, uh, we allow residents and employees to park there for the CBD with with permits. Um, but if you look at the utilization, especially on the weekend, especially the lot behind the train station, it's just not heavily utilized. Um, so we think there's an opportunity there to, you know, not stack cars, but stack horizontally mm -hmm. cars. Yeah. 
Um, not heavily utilized. Like if there's three cars in that lot when I drive by right. it, I'm shocked. Right. So I, you know, I, I think that was our thought as a first good opportunity for underutilized space that we have control over um, to at least pilot some kind of valet program for the CBD. Um, doing it at the charter school would require um, some more legal review because um, whether or not you know it has implications for the tax situation still has to be further looked at but we think it doesn't um, but we just want to present it as a potential opportunity because they have 75 spaces um, and I actually spoke to the administrator at the school and they were interested in at least talking to the city so um, it seems like a potential opportunity so I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood. Which lots are you looking to do this for at the transportation? I know, but you got to show me. Yeah. You gotta sh yeah. uh, show not me. the one out here. So the one, not the ones here. The one, the one there, there. there and the one, one back there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Have one by the transportation. First of all, we got to get all that track on. That's true. And I kind of like the one behind here because I've heard from people who take the train here to Asbury Park at night that they sometimes feel it's dark and kind of lonely back there and a little bit concerned. And I think if we maybe have parking and have an attendant there it'll make people feel well, more comfortable we're not going to have an attendant there this well is there will be, be an attendant there well, correct well that's it 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 is a it, we would be it's going to be an rfp right it's a right. right. concession yes, right we'll be leasing it to somebody mm -hmm. and you got high voltage that's just open there it's going to be used in this lot a lot more and everything so you're going to be taken away from them I'm not keen on taking away from city-owned lots already the lot owned by the charter school i have no problem with i would have no problem with the lot owned by the Board of Education behind the Thurgood Marshall School. I have no problem with the lot owned by the Jewish uh, war veterans. I mean, I know they don't like this because we put in parking meters, but they still may want to make money on valet parking. If valet parking is needed downtown, but it's just like to designate these two spots, which being on the parking committee, I know we are designating these lots for people for either employees and then you know with this new building is getting close to open so that's going to be more residents so where are they going to go i hate to take up spaces I hate to sell spaces twice right i did want to say these were we picked what we picked of ones we thought we could quickly roll out that's why the other two were very good suggestions but would take a little bit more time in negotiation. Yeah, it's quick to roll out, but it's quick to like, for me, you get a phone call, Jesus, John, I bought myself a employee parking spot. Now I can't find a parking spot because there's are valet parking in there now. So, I mean, I'm going to take that well, phone call, not you. Sure. I mean, the other thing is we did add Summerfield Ave to the places where residents and employees can park. And it's not really yet at capacity. I mean, the weekends it is, but, um, the weekend and sometimes it is right, right. right now you can find a parking spot any place right but i mean it is another place that residents and employees can park so the valet is going to potentially be the majority in the summertime right mostly and that's when these lots are full with employees and residents most not 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 the one back not here the behind, behind the, the train station it's filled with our junk vehicles well which we're selling soon it's on tonight's agenda so that's good okay I'm fine with um, all the lots, but the one by high voltage. Is that the lot where the cab, cab stands be at? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm off further door up. What's that? By the stores. Is that part of? Yeah, by high voltage. Uh, second life. And I agree with Eileen. I think that back lot having movement in it at night, as somebody who very rarely but occasionally parks back there, yeah, would be a good thing. Yeah. So Michelle, can I ask you, um, will there be action at the next meeting potentially with a resolution to refer one or both of these matters to the planning board? That, that was the idea, to aim for the next meeting. Why would we go to, to the planning board? I mean, you have what? to amend the, the Main Street redevelopment plan Before in order to can... allow the recording studio. Bef okay, that one I, I understand, but for this one. but. If you have to RFP this, if nobody bids on it, why are we going to put it to the planning board? Is there a need to change the redevelopment plan to allow for the, the valet parking lots? Correct. So that's why. It has to, to change a redevelopment plan to allow a new use that's not otherwise allowed 
it has to be sent to the planning board for their review and recommendation and then after that the council has to adopt an ordinance to change the plan this would be expensive oh no we do it in-house to the planning board we do it in-house in insight Hiram Gruel will not review it well that is of course be beyond my control our control but of course we would <laughs> do the amend I would do the amendment and I, I would present the amendment right but it, they're the planning board's professionals will review it and charge somebody be it the city right although there's no legal obligation okay. that to whatever occur. and All again right. I, I agree with you <coughs> I think if you know I'm not a tax attorney I'm not an attorney but if it school or a church starts renting out their property as a parking lot well they have to pay taxes is what i've been told in the past no. and it, tom's it, river is a case on it so we're going to spend a lot of money researching this for somebody that's going to submit no rfps or rfqs so my understanding with the school is that if if the city runs the service if it's a city run service then they do not have to pay property taxes on that. And you think we're capable of running a city-run valet parking service? Well, it would be our service that it is <coughs> operated by a licensed, you know, a licensed firm. But well, then we're not running. A licensed firm is running. Where are we going to be partners with them? But it's not like it's not like the school is running the service themselves. Is what right. I'm getting at. So who's running? It's a city service being run by a third party. Yes. Being operated by a third party. Yes. Like a concession. And it's a concession. It's a concession. Say it costs a dollar. What part of the dollar does the city get for all this? Whatever the minimum bid is. The same thing as the paddle boats. Well, then why not? Did you approach the Board of Education about Thurgood Marshall School? No. If you're going to do one, why not do them all? The only thing was Thurgood Marshall was a smaller lot. We, we were going to start. Cars? 20 versus 75 for the charter school. We were going to start, you know, with a pilot program to see you know what the what the real uh, use is of a, of a valet program it's possible that we could launch it and you know it doesn't get that much use and we wouldn't want to you know start with a huge program that is not hey, not we, really we used. need more parking so you might as well start looking into it We're on to item D, review of agenda items for their November 8, 2017 oh, okay. regular meeting. <coughs> Resolution 2017-330 is a special event application, so it's we've heard. Resolution 331 is authorizing a refund of an overpayment of um, sewer. Resolutions 332, 333, 334 is award of an RCA contract for the subsequent addresses. Resolutions 335 and 336 <laughs> are the disposition of surplus property, the electronics is some extra computers, and the light that we can get rid of, and public works is for the slate that's at the fisherman's lot. 337 is accepting the annual mental health grant that is pays for salaries in the Department of Social Services. Resolution 338 is the budget transfer. Resolution 339 is the payment of bills. Resolutions 340 and 341 is a change order for stormwater um, manholes on the Sunset Avenue project. Um, the first one is for repairing and replacing of the, the sewer man, the storm sewer manholes, and approximately 700 linear feet of um, clay pipe to PVC and. 341 is for the inspection cost for TNF. Uh, staff is recommending both of those. Resolution 342 is the annual resolution um, waiving certain parking meter uh, payments that are due. And resolution 2017 343 is for Santander Bank for um, their sign that they want to write. Any questions? Yeah, hold on one second. I have a question on 341, but I've got to read what I wrote. Karen. Okay. 
page 117. Yes. Replace 700 linear feet, feet of existing clay drainage pipe on Sunset Avenue. This is the only drainage pipe on Sunset Avenue we replaced, or did we forget to put this in the original bid? This was not put in the original bid because we were looking at the cost. And as now as it, it came in under bid, we can do the additional work. How much more out there is not being replaced because we didn't think we had the money? This is where it terminates. Okay, so um, this completes the entire project? This should complete the entire project. At the next meeting, there will be a change order reflecting um, a sanitary sewer change that had to be done. And then um, if there is no other issues, um, we're going to recommend repaving Web Street because all the change orders should be done. Hopefully, that's why it's not on this one. We want to make sure as late as possible. Um, but we do have some money even before we get to the cost. Thank the final cost allocation. No other questions. Okay, we are on to item E, matters from the city council. I have nothing at this time. So I just want to congratulate uh, Jesse and the recreation committee and our recreation department for their trunk and treat on Halloween. It was a really great activity, and I think you had over a thousand children go through and get candies and all kinds of things. So, good job, and thank you very much. Thank you. Let me just say this we appreciate it. The Recreation, Com Recreation Committee really appreciate it, and we really appreciate all the volunteers and the donations and all. But you're also leaving out one, some, someone that was very popular and very helpful, Alicia. Thank you. You know, you're the top, and you really helped out a great deal. And basically, that's it. Thank you. Nothing. <laughs> Would you give us our two-week traffic update? And I got a request that kind of made sense. After you do this, like tomorrow, could we maybe post this on the website so everybody can figure out like where we stand for the next two weeks as far as the traffic uh, projects going on, which I think would be helpful. I thought it was a good suggestion. <coughs> sure. Thank you. Um, for the road pro improvement project, all concrete work on Sunset Ave is complete. Um, the paving is being postponed until this change order is done. And the base pave is anticipated to be done in a few weeks, um, no later than early November. No, 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 what? No later than early November. We're December, I'm sorry. I'm going to say we're in early November. I, okay. I can travel through time. Okay. Fourth Avenue concrete uh, sanitary laterals are approximately 95% done. Storm sewers are approximately 75% done. And the concrete is anticipate, was anticipated to start being poured early this week, but there's been some weather issues. Um, base paving is anticipated also to begin in early December. Uh, the Springwood Avenue sanitary sewer bid replacement. There, as of this morning, there are 16 bidders who have picked up the plans and specs. The project was advertised on 1024, and bids are received on Tuesday. Or received and opened on Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 14th. Um, there's been no change in the application to Deal Lake Drive for New Jersey Department of Transportation. Uh, the grant awards are expected to be announced in early of 2018. And um, just in miscellaneous, the water crews are continuing to transfer water service along Main Street. Um, and then Asbury Avenue construction is began on schedule and contractor is currently working on installation <coughs> of drainage, drainage structures and pipes. Uh, the tentative plan is to begin milling and paving at the end of the month if everything holds up. Okay. A, couple, a, a concern. Uh, I'm going to say two meetings ago, uh, it seemed like we knew Sunset Avenue was behind schedule because of everything we ran in down by the high school, with the concrete bunkers and the spaghetti laterals. But 4th Avenue was on schedule to be paved by 
top coat minimum by November 23rd. Now that seems like we're into December and that scares me because once we get into December, we get snow. So why, are, why is 4th Avenue falling behind? I don't, if 4th Avenue isn't falling behind, it depends on this change order. Because then they'll do the work and come in and then finish the milling paving. Jay's standing in the corner, he just walked in. I know, I saw him. Um, am I correct on that? He probably wasn't even listening. It's because of the change order that is for tonight. Well, I live on 4th Avenue, and uh, I'll tell you, I mean, I see like three or four guys working. I mean, like, you know, we're getting close to winter time. If those streets don't have a base coat down on them in the winter time, it's going to be holy hell to pay for everybody. And uh, it's going to be unacceptable by me and by, I think, the city. So, whatever we have to do, if they have to work, they have contracts. If they have to bring men in overtime. And they brought in additional persons. What exactly are they doing on 4th Avenue? 4th right? Avenue is slow to a bomb. What exactly are they doing? Replacing this is what neighbors are asking me. They're replacing the sure. entire sewer system, sanitary sewer system. But they're and, going and up they're and down, cross round, and then coming back again. They're replacing the entire sanitary sewer system and upgrading the stormwater and then mill and pave the road. And one of the things they're not doing is they're not putting out signs to tell people to move their cars. They, at the beginning they did, but now they're not. Okay. Well, they need to be addressed. Again, I'm just scared. I, I don't want to get into the first snow and we're plowing those streets. So anything we can do to light a fire to get them to speed it up would be deeply appreciated. Matters from the city manager? None at this time. Matters from the city attorney? I had nothing at this time. <clears throat> we will take a short recess and the regular meeting will begin at 7. Council Member Chapman? Here. Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. We are on to item B. Please. Rise. I'm sorry. Salute. Yeah, we're going to do silent. Oh, okay. oh, mine's reversed this time. We're going to please stand. Solid We're going to salute the flag. Yeah, why? Yeah, no. Going to. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Item D, and I'm, as to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act. Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 3rd, 2017, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Item E, public participation. Do I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Uh, Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Please come to the mic, state your name and address. You have three minutes. Hello. Um, Jordan Modell, Second Avenue. Um, I think that Vin and Murphy ran a great campaign, but as far as the food goes, I've been sick as a dog ever since, so I figured I'd be first up so I can be first out. Um, so I just had three things to say on the, the short-term rental one. Um, one is, um, I'm sort of worried about some un unintended consequences, so I'm kind of hoping that um, the council maybe takes more time to make sure that all these are worked out, maybe they are. Um, one unintended consequence could possibly be that Let's say you're doing all the right things, right? You own a house in Asbury Park, you rent it out all year round. Um, and by the way, I commend you guys for all trying to find the Asbury Park that we know and love and keep it. I think all sides want to do that, um, whatever their intentions are. Anyway, let's say you rent it out and your tenant um, says that they, they puts it up on Airbnb or other some short-term rental thing. You as an owner, it looks like, you'd be fined $2,000 for something that's not your fault. You could, probably, you could go to the tenant, but you can't kick a tenant out as long as they're paying their rent. So I'm just worried that us as owners doing the right thing, 
probably wouldn't be me, but it could be somebody else, right, um, get caught up in this unintended consequence. A second unintended consequence, similar thing, um, this being Asbury Park, um, let's say you go to Georgia's or Watermark and meet the ephemeral love of your life. Um, if you don't mark that person in for the night, you could also be fined $2,000. Um, so it's, because you're supposed to mark down everybody sleeping over there that night, right? Um, and it may or may not be possible to uh, do that under those particular circumstances. So that's sort of number two. Um, number three is um, that at least give thought, since I think that everybody would say that Asbury Park is not quite ruined yet, um, for to grant something, because I, sorry, I apologize, I'm sick, I'm, so, I'm babbling a little bit. Um, but one of the causes in there is you're okay if you applied for summer rentals in 2017 possibly something to think about that would cover a lot of the people here, a lot of people who worry about these things, um, is covering people who do that up until 2018, so that it gives us locals a chance to come in and possibly be covered by that too. Um, I was thinking specifically of the woman yet last time out who said that she um, lived here year round, but her husband has a municipal job in New York, so they had to list their residence as New York because he comes out on the weekends. And she couldn't be covered by that even though she lives here all year round. So I was kind of worried about people who like that woman. That's it. Thank you very much. Michael Nip, uh, 1137 First Avenue. I would like to read a statement from John Biondo, who regretfully could not be here tonight. One out of every 400 Asbury Park residents is a registered sex offender. Our city has seven times the state average for violent crime, three times the state average for property crime, and is the poorest city in Monmouth County. Our schools are last in everything, but we spend nearly the most money per child. And from your perch, you think Airbnb is the most pressing issue facing our city. You didn't campaign on it, any of you. So to set this as your priority is a fraud on the voters. I hope I am wrong and the city has declined to vote into law its own misguided ordinance. We have agreed to disagree in the substance of the measure and my efforts at compromise were met with silence. But there should be no disagreement on process. We are a Faulkner Act city and you are a council subject to those rules. The act is clear. It gives citizens the right to petition the government and provide strict rules for having that petition certified. We met those guidelines. We gathered signatures, we attended all of the meetings, we acted in good faith from moment one. By enacting your ordinance today, you are confusing the voters, especially those 200 plus who signed the petition. They signed to repeal the existing law and now you are changing the existing law. You are moving the goalpost, changing the, ru changing the rules of the game and causing havoc in the law. You will now ask citizens to learn a second new system only to have it be potentially changed in less than a year by ballot initiative. This is ridiculous and unnecessary. 75% of the people polled do not want you to vote on your law. How can you not listen to that? There is no urgent problem for you to deal with. Short-term rentals are not currently having any negative impact on the city. You have provided no evidence of any kind at any meeting that I am wrong about that. You have much more urgent problems to deal with. I think I've noted those above. <clears throat> Make no mistake. If you insist on pushing forward, we will not relent. I will sue the city for an injunction. If the court does not grant it, you are about to have thousands of angry citizens in a coming summer filled with fines and confusion and frustration. This is not the way to build a community and not the way to govern. When the ballot comes around in November of 18, I do not see how you think people will not vote yes for change in every possible sense. Thank you, John Biondo. Thank you. Five thirty-eight. Get special treatment. <laughs> Hi everyone. My name is Derek Minot Bloom. I live in eleven oh eight First Avenue. Um, community organizer. Um, few groups, but the Asbury Park um, Affordable Housing Coalition, along with the Education Justice Collective. And it was nice to speak after him because I'm saying something <laughs> completely opposite. So I get to kind of change it up a little bit. But I'm here actually to just say that I support city council and also knowing some of you that you've also talked to people around the city um, and heard other people's ideas about what this um, 
uh, short-term rental can do for people. And when I'm thinking about affordable housing, and I know you're also working on affordable housing ordinances and things like that, that this is actually just one step in the direction for affordable housing and justice for our whole city. Because when we look at our city, from what I know, 30 some or more percent of the people in the city are under the poverty um, level. So that's a, that's a pretty big amount for one city. And a lot of times those folks don't necessarily get to vote or don't come to these things, which I think we could actually see pretty well. Um, so I think that you're actually, this ordinance looks at them and looks that, that Asbury needs more full year housing um, and affordable housing, not housing that's hiked up for Airbnb to create more recreation for the summer. So I really appreciate what you're doing and I see that it's actually part of a larger vision for affordable housing in Asbury. I also hope that at some point we can do rent control and things like that. Um, but also to other people that are, <laughs> whoo, like I said, it was gonna be the opposite. Um, but to other people here, I do do Airbnb with my house. It helps me pay taxes, it helps me pay some mortgages. So I also appre appreciate that you didn't do what Bradley did and you're like, you know what, we're just gonna get rid of it at all. And I felt like you heard people a little bit and you're like, well, what, what would it look like if we had people do 30 or 40 days? I forget the exact, the ordinance is pretty long. But um, so anyway, I appreciate that you listened and there still is possibilities for Airbnb, but also possibilities for people not to come buy up houses just for short term um, rentals and not for long term housing. Because we do have to remember that we are in a city where people live year round and in very different income brackets. Some people have two or three houses. Some people don't have a house. You know, so how can we come together and create a just city where everybody's happy, where people are housing, where 30% of our community members aren't under the poverty line. So anyway, I appreciate what, what y'all are doing and look forward to work to justice in the future with everybody here and the council. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Shonameo, 615 Asbury Avenue. Uh, I'm a real estate consultant in Manhattan. I bought here 14 years ago. Uh, I spend half of my year here, so it's not my primary residence. Um, you know, this regulation, you have to think about what kind of community you want. I, I came here and bought here and will be permanent in two years because I wanted a community. I wanted my neighbors. Now, there's nothing wrong with uh, owners le uh, renting out short term uh, their homes every once in a while to make ends meet. But we're going to have a real problem. Uh, if we uh, don't regulate it and allow people to just buy houses uh, to short-term rental. Uh, there are a number of studies out already because this is rampant across the country where short-term rentals are in fact uh, increasing rents because they're reducing the supply of rental opportunities on a long-term long -term basis. They're also uh, reducing the supply of homes for homeowners to uh, purchase homes to live in. Now, if someone wants to buy a property to have full, total, transient occupancy, then let them buy a property that is zoned for that, that has code for that. Almost every municipality in the United States regulates short-term rentals. I think the council is being very fair because they're allowing some short-term rentals for primary residents. Uh, you may consider for, I, I personally have no uh, uh, desire to rent out my house, but I know there are a lot of people like me that it's not their primary residence, but they spend a great deal of time here. So maybe there could be even for, you know, certain situations, but it has to be regulated. People say there is no problems, there will be problems. Uh, you, when, you, when you have a right or a law, you have to think, you have to take it to its extreme. You know, so that's why, like for instance, in multifamily buildings in New York City, uh, they think about, well, what's the harm if, if one person rents out their apartment short term? But you have to think about it, if everybody did that simultaneously, there'd be more ingress and egress. And that's why transient properties have higher code regulations, uh, have just different regulations that, uh, because there's different traffics of people. Uh, but I want to, for instance, on my block, say everybody transient uh, rents on a short-term basis. I'll never get to know my neighbors to watch over my house and me watch over theirs. 
so I support the council in regulating short-term rentals. Thank you. Hi, Brett Lowell, 1107 Bridge Street. Um, I have a statement I prepared. Uh, so what we have here, as I see it, are two worthy goals that virtually everyone can agree on. The first is allowing homeowners flexibility in renting out their homes, and the second is to protect the rich socioeconomic diversity of our town by preventing runaway gentrification. The issue is that these two goals may possibly be in opposition to each other. At first, my opinion leaned towards the unregulated side of the spectrum because, mostly because I was not aware of any hard or credible data linking short-term rentals to excessive gentrification. But then something happened that changed my mind. A realtor friend had a client who wanted to talk to me about, to ask me about the Airbnb situation in town. This man lives in a wealthy town south of here, and he has a conglomerate of investors with a wad of cash looking to snap up properties in Asbury Park. This man told me how he went to a seminar given by someone who made a business out of buying properties, outfitting them with automated locks, and turning them into Airbnb hotels. And that's what they want to do here. It's easy, it brings in a lot of money, and they've already purchased several very large houses here. This made my blood run cold. I don't need to see any hard or credible data to know that that's not what I want to see in this town. And from what I read in Tri-City News and other places, I believe that's that what's driving the push towards regulation is fear of carpetbaggers making this town a community of Airbnb hotels. Now there are a number of people in town who have been renting short term for years and are clearly not carpetbaggers, but are longstanding and contributing members of the Asbury Park community for decades. I understand why they feel they should be allowed to continue to do so, and I agree. Uh, perhaps there's some way to grandfather them in. Nevertheless, as I read it, the proposed referendum law does not protect us from carpetbaggers and if it was put up for vote today, I would vote against it. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, I feel that the city council proposed law is too restrictive in certain aspects, aspects such as the following cases. As we just heard, uh, properties that are owner occupied, but where for a variety of reasons, perhaps it's a weekend or summer home, or for voting or employment or tax reasons, the owner may not want to officially make it their principal residence according to the strict definition of the council's law. Um, and then there are the people who long ago took considerable risk to re re rehabilitate properties in town and create this thriving short-term rental market. So restricting these groups does nothing towards protecting us from carpetbagging outside investors. So I ask the council and all others to work towards finding somewhere along this free reign regulation spectrum an optimal point that maximizes fairness and value for all. And by the way, the, the council has already heard my plea for rapid action one way or another on this issue. Just for the record, if the council passes an interbill now and there's a referendum to vote in the meantime, personally, I don't think it would, I would be so confused. Um, so it was, would affect my vote. Thanks. Thank you. Hi everyone, Randy Thompson from Park Avenue. Uh, I want to start out by saying we're a 20-year family here in Asbury Park. We don't do Airbnb. We don't have any immediate plans to do it. Um, but we did move in here, and I got to tell you, we fought and we suffered and we cried just to have a home here in Asbury Park. And I feel very that it's very unfair for um, for you to tell us that we're you're going to make it so hard for us to capitalize on our investment that this is really not going to be a, a viable option going forward. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this ordinance about how there's not enough dwelling space that's affordable in Asbury Park, that existed long before we even started talking about this. And, and you know, to be honest with you guys, I know each and every one of you, I'm not being nasty, but you have total control. All five of you are from the same team, that's your second hand-picked city manager. If you want to do something about affordable housing in this city, you could have done it already. Not enough parking. Everybody's been screaming there's not enough parking. You know, this is, you know, <laughs> please tell the billionaire hotels and the developers that there's not enough parking and have them, you know, find them when there's not enough. I think that's very lopsided for families like ours that are not rich, that are not wealthy, and you know, we keep getting tax increases, and this is one more burden telling us that our primary investment for multiple generations is not going to be able to be capitalized in a way that we would like to consider in the future. So I think this is way overboard. I think it's um, a bit rushed, 
there is a ballot initiative. So I don't think uh, I don't think you should be voting on this tonight. I think you should table it and listen more to the community. I want to bring up one other subject real quick. It is being addressed. Um, I communicated with all of you that my daughter had been harassed, cyber harassed, uh, with anti-gay, uh, bigoted language. And I went right to the Asbury Park Police, and they did not take action. Uh, they told me that the offenders were, uh, you know, the son of a cop. And I said, why, why does that matter? And you know what? A year later, they still did not take action. And I communicated with you guys a lot. And I spoke to you directly, John, so thank you for at least moving it one inch. But I don't feel like I should be, have to call you and fight the police department to protect my daughter from anti-gay, bigoted harassment. I had to go to the Monmouth County prosecutor. And I had to argue with them, and finally they're taking action. You know, it's great that we have L, you know, LGBTQ uh, leadership on the council, but what good is it if uh, you know, this goes on and I can't even go to the police department? And that's a, that's a richly funded police department. It's one out of every $4 we spend on taxpayer money right there. And they would not take action for my daughter, who's a 14-year-old. So I think you should table this. I think you should listen more. And I wanted to say that publicly because I am I'm very upset about that, that I had to go and fight with the prosecutor for them to take action because someone here didn't want to take action because they had some sort of relationship with the offending kids. My name is Wendy Glassman, 703 Sunset Avenue. I have a short statement in support of the council's proposed ordinance. I think that each of the actions that we consider and the council considers to undertake and decisions <coughs> to act or not act reflect and are a testament of our social values and aspirations of who we are and the community we aspire to become. The action that the council takes on this issue will mold the character of our city at a particularly sensitive time. Unlike other towns like Ocean Grove, Cape May, Belmar, other towns that have been mentioned in, in various posts, our city is not simply a summer transient tourist destination. We are and work hard to build a vibrant year-round urban community with a stable population, a committed community with businesses supporting personal living and commercial enterprise. The council's proposed short-term rental ordinance recognizes the need for housing stock to sustain a permanent population, provide and preserve now stable residential neighborhoods, and support those who have made the city their home, and still allow for accommodations to those who need or desire financial support in the form of rentals and home sharing to make maintaining their homes viable. The proposal does not impair property owners or impact property owners from long-term rentals and realizing a final return, a financial return on their investments in real estate. The proposal put forward by Mr. Biondi has the effect of surreptitiously removing long-term <coughs> residential units from the limit housing stock and thereby goes against the value of building a permanent community in favor of short-term profits, disruption to neighbors, sense of peace and continuity, and prioritizing transient visitors over a stable population. Um, thank you for the opportunity for making the comment. And again, I support the proposal as it's been made. Thank, thank you. you. If you're going to be shy, I'm going to shut it down. So if somebody wants to talk, come on. Hi, Paul Vale, 511 Second. You can, pull I need it up, to Paul. Paul. you can move it up, Paul. <laughs> or I can get that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I too am very disappointed that this is an issue that the council has put so much focus and attention on. I mean, when I helped you guys campaign in the last election, I made very clear to you some of the things that were really important to me. Things like improving trash collection in town, which hasn't been addressed since I've been here in 2002. Short-term COs so that the city can get in and reinspect departments that have been neglected by the landlords for years and years and years with the same Tenants living in these slumlord conditions, I mean, another gentleman here was talking about carpetbaggers in this town, or worried about carpetbaggers coming to this town. We have a ton of carpetbaggers in this town already that own a ton of large multifamily homes on the east side of town. For the, for the most part, the condition of these homes has not improved one iota in the, in the 15, 16 years I've been here. 
And that's because there's no incentive to do so. And I was very excited about what uh, Airbnb and VRBO could do to change the, the tenor of some of these neighborhoods where, where <coughs> future landlords can reimagine their use instead of being just uh, the lowest of the low end trash properties, people might come in and fix them up, improve the neighborhoods, and, 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 and help those neighborhoods survive. I've got a block next to me on 2nd Avenue, the uh, 700 block. Hasn't changed a bit. I pray for gentrification on that block. It hasn't happened. And why? Because the slumlords do what they do year after year. The council doesn't bother them. The trash is all over the place like it always is. Why, when is that stuff going to be addressed? And why, why are you focused on taking away my property rights for this? I don't get it. That's all I have to say. Alicia Simmons, um, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park, lifelong resident of Asbury Park, Monmouth County. I wasn't going to say anything today because it, it awes me if um, everybody shows out for these events, for this specific event. And there were some points brought up by certain different people um, who spoke about um, property and coming here and year-long um, year communities and um, short-term communities and gentrification. I think, sir, the, the word gentrification is a real harsh word. Maybe you're looking for improvement um, to the block because as the person had to have lived in these slumlord apartments paying top dollar of $1,300, $1,400 a month for a whole, right? Um, it's not cheap. And it's, you know, you're right about revitalizing a block, but gentrification means to push out and to move away. I think that we need to continue to tr address um, the issues that are happening here, but it's this issues is throughout the state. But specifically, we have to address a community of Asbury Park, what we want to be, what kind of community we are, what we want to be in the future. We can't sit here and think one-sided. Right? We can't sit here and put our personal views in the, um, in, in the forefront because it affects us right here, right now, because we don't just speak for us. We speak for generations to come after us. Right? Recently, someone told me, and said, bring this up, how someone, one of their friends had someone show up to their house um, with a, a suitcase full of um, money saying, um, take this money, move out, I need your house. Now, they didn't take it. Um, but is that the community we want to live in, right? Are we living in small hotels? I don't want to tell you what to do with your things. I don't know what you do in your home, right? But I also know that this is my community. And there's a way that we can sit here and really address making a home. And this <coughs> Asbury Park, we're losing the greatness that makes it the best city in the world, right? If we continue to sell our generations out. There's a way to make money there's a way to make a community, a way to make everything happen. And I think that the council is trying their best to make sure that everybody is affected. But Asbury Park is not Belmar. It's not Bradley Beach where partial of my grow up was in Bradley Beach, right? It's, it's year round, right? The, de the town doesn't die come um, October. We're a town, we're the city. We're the only urban city in Monmouth County. And we should be addressed that. This is our, this is our future and this is our children's future. That's it. Hi, good evening, Ruth Ann Harrison, 406th Avenue. I'd just like to start off by thanking all of you for all of your hard work, because I know you guys work night and day to make this town what it's become, so I appreciate that. Um, that being said, I'm also here in support of asking you to please hold off on making your decision on the summer rental ordinance. Um, I've been here almost 30 years. I came in as a single mom raising two kids, struggled and bought my house for very little money because it was all I could afford and that's what I bought here. Over the years, I've struggled with year-round tenants. I have some wonderful tenants now that are year-round, but I'd also like to be able to reap some of the fruits of my labors and be able to have someone come in. It's less stress on the community when you have people come in just for the summer. We don't have to pay for them in the schools. We have less problems um, because they're not year-round uh, throughout the year with police, fire, uh, emergency services. So in my mind, I think it's something that the people should decide. 
and by letting it go to uh, what do they call it, the referendum or whatever it is in the next election the people can decide if the people decide that they don't want summer rentals well let the people talk if they decide they do I think it should be up to the community so that's about all I have to say and thank you again everybody for everything you've done for us appreciate thank it. You for You can only speak once, sir. You can only speak once, sir. You can only speak once, sir. And, and also, just so you're aware, there are going to be public hearings later on during the council meeting about the two ordinances that are on the agenda concerning short-term rental, so you'll have the opportunity to speak then. Motion to close. Later on this evening, yes. Second. All in favor? Louise, are you going or what? Okay. Okay. Uh, not, not that this isn't, believe me, it is, but it has to do with one of your resolutions. Um, Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue, all my life living here. Uh, the resolution, um, 2017-343. Hey, Louise, can you talk a little bit more on the microphone? I can't tell if it's working or... Better? No? no. Yo. Yes? No, they're saying it's on. Just uh -huh. speak a little closer to it, Louise, if you can. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any better? Much. Um, okay. Um, the resolution authorizing the City of Asbury Park to grant a revocable license agreement for encroachment over there, the, the sign, the awning, or whatever. Uh, generally, generally, on Highway 71, <coughs> the right of way starts at the building. So, my question is can the city actually go forward with this agreement? It might be something you want to look into, which brings me to the banner on between Sunset Avenue and 6th. That is definitely in the state highway right of way. And I need to know. Well, maybe you need to check it out. You need uh, state approval for that because it's hanging out there in the right of way, the state right of way, because it's a Highway 71, it's a state highway. So, with that being said, um, I don't know if you want to go forward with this resolution tonight, but let's talk about the banner <coughs> again. And my only two questions were for what purpose was it put in the state right of way? And the other thing is, why was the banner put up to begin with? I don't know. I say it's an advertisement. Somebody else is arguing with me and saying, no, it's not an advertisement. And I'd just like to know, why is it there? Who put it there? What was the reasoning for it? Because I don't think those questions have ever been asked. And um, public works, do we pay them as a taxpayer? I have to pay public works to put it up, take it down, put it up? I don't know if that's in their job description. But anyway, so that's where I stand as far as the banner on 6th and set between 6th Avenue and Sunset and your banner over here with the airspace. Because I do know over there, the right of way starts at the building on 71. Fred. So I can respond to the first point with regard to the uh, awning or canopy that uh, the sovereign aka Santander Bank would like to install which would uh, incorporate about 65 square feet of the airspace immediately adjacent to the entrance to the bank the agreement indicates that to the extent the city has jurisdiction over the area in question and without making any affirmative representations in regard thereto and also says that the licensee acknowledges that additional approvals may be required from other agencies and or authorities besides the licensor such as the state of new jersey that may have jurisdiction over the area in question and that it's the licensee's sole responsibility to investigate whether any other agencies or authorities have such jurisdiction so essentially it's like a quick claim deed okay. to whatever degree we have any jurisdiction over the area in question that 65 square foot of airspace we're giving them our consent but they are um, aware that they have to get additional approvals potentially okay what about the one on the high one take that over there there might be additional approvals needed outside of, <coughs> excuse me the initial application process I think Louis 
Louise, my recollection of the facts was that Christian from Garden State Equality filled out an application to put up the flag and the application was filled out over some period of time and I don't know about the airspace argument. I'm not sure about the airspace argument. Well, I can't well, talk on that. There, I don't think, Amy, over there, I don't think it's airspace. It's actually on. It's in the right away of Highway 71. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I, I just, I'm just saying I couldn't yeah. comment on that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I But if you're know. asking who did it, Christian, what Christian was, what, from Garden what, what State Equality. What was the reasoning for it? He wanted to put up a gay flag okay. on, the, on the pole. Okay. So he runs a nonprofit called okay. Garden State Equality okay. that spends their time um, advocating for equality for the LGBTQ community. Okay. So now, does that open the door for anybody else on 71 to put up any kind of... I think anyone on 71 who fills out the proper protocol from JCPNL can put up, I assume, unless it was some sort of nuisance. I don't... I, I, don't, well, now, I certainly this, shouldn't this be speaking... That much. I assume that. other people could put up flags on poles if they want to. Well, I know of one incident where they made him take his flag down. It was a welcome set flag in front of his store, <laughs> and the city made him remove it. Well, I would happily, re he can happily reach out to us, or I would happily reach out to him if you want to tell me okay. after the meeting. Okay. So All right. Was it on a JCPNL pole? No, it was on his building. Uh, are you going to talk about a air A and B uh, at the... Uh, and A, please I read it. Let's get you three Read them around the Eighth Avenue. Uh, okay. Amy, I gave you a file two weeks ago. There was no application for that banner, and there was no permission granted from Jersey Central Power and Light and the state of New Jersey, which that's where you have to go. So That's do you not have the another piece of paper I that I didn't PNL. get? Okay, okay. I, I gave you a whole file on it. The only one that didn't get it was Councilwoman Chapman because she wasn't here. Okay. So where's the application and where's the permit? That's all we want to know. And we can't seem to get a straight answer about it. And you don't want banners all over Main Street, I don't think. How about if the Sisters of Mercy put up a cross on a banner? Would you like that? I mean, that's what you're creating. It has nothing to do with what's up there. It's something that you're starting, and it's not. Well, it's for the not record, right. I didn't have to personally think of the start it. It's highway, <laughs> highway 71 does not belong to Michael or Cindy or you. Because if you read the first part of the letter, it says that the undersigned, and who signs it? Michael and Cindy. They're not the owners of the Jersey Central Power and Light Pole. You have to get permission. Why are you breaking the rules? There's rules in there. I gave you a copy of the rules. And nobody's following them. I mean, like, if you don't follow the rules, why should we? Everybody could do whatever they want then. That's not fair. And you know it. So, what's the period of time? You said they have permission? What's the period of time? It wasn't put on the paper. You are correct. The dates were not put on the paper. Huh? The dates were not put on the paper. I will concede that point. I can't hear you. You, you are correct. The dates weren't on, on the application initially. So, what are we going to do about it? I guess we're going to reach out to Christian and, and figure out what Christian <coughs> wants to do, what dates he wants to do, and JCPNL. JCPNL came back to us, I said this at the last meeting, and said that they don't want to give carte blanche unended, un, an unending amount of time, and they usually have a standard of six months. So then we amended the application for six months. So it was September through February. JCPNL was completely accepting of that. What, what date was that, Michael? September. I can't hear you. How about talking in the microphone? September through February. There's, well, is that another piece of paper that I didn't get? I have the paper here. You have no dates. As I, mean, I just on, said, you be J fair about as this. I just said, JCPNL called us 
and stated that there was no dates and they don't want to give carte blanche unending dates. So they said they usually um, provide for six months. So we said, okay, we'll amend the permit from the six month time when it was put in, which is approximately September 20th, six months through February 20th. And JCPNL said, okay, and they wrote on the application and that's where we stand with the dates, six months time as per JCPNL. No, well, you, you did the application, not the organization. And, and I have to tell you that you're not supposed to do it. That comes from an organization or a person. It doesn't come from the city of Asbury Park. We, you represent all the people, not just a certain few. She was interrupted a little bit, and I'm not that much of a draconian that, you know, I give people to finish this paragraph, and some of her time was taken up by up here. So. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrammer, Long Branch. Um, the other night, I was at an event here in town on Bangs Avenue, and the key out didn't print out the receipt. No big deal, but I wanted to make sure I don't get a ticket, and I thought it'd be good to have the receipt. So I called up the police department. That was like talking to the Keystone cop. That was the only way to call it. But the Kiev should have an identification number on them with an 800 number that you can call directly to them. It doesn't. So there's Kievs all over the place. How come they don't have the street or the number on them so you know where they're at? Because the Keystone cop says, well, what's the address? Well, it's the parking garage. There's no address on the building. He didn't know where the parking garage was. I had to tell them between the two streets. So the bottom line is they should be clearly marked what key after you're using. So when you call the police department, so when the traffic cop come by, they can see which one done right away. Um, and I don't know. I never heard of telling people, if I can't have my way, I'm not going to vote for you the next time. I thought we're a bunch of adults here. I don't know how people can behave like that. I'm sorry you have to get abused that way. You're doing a good job. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Hey, Jerry, just, uh, and Michael Manzel is the chess. I know, he's here. I know, <laughs> I can see him. <laughs> Michael Manzel is here. I believe all the kiosks are, are numbered. Yes. Well, are they numbered? Because I couldn't, the cops couldn't tell me what it was. There's a number on the back of the kiosk, the bottom of the video. So it's nice. You can't see them at nighttime. Why can't you make them bigger? I mean, right. we, we're, we're, we admit the parking meeting meters are old and past their best days. They're okay. being replaced. Uh, 25 have been ordered, and eventually all 100 will be replaced before the well, summer. Mark, phone right there, yes. The phone numbers are posted. Well, I couldn't figure out why I paid $2 an hour in City Hall parking lot and the guy next to me paid $1 an hour and I took it to my corner. It was a mistake by the machine. And I said, well, do I get my $4 back? And the answer was no. So uh, the, the, machines are, the machines are bad. We're well aware of that. We're spending close to a million dollars to buy new machines. And I forgot, I still think I have a minute left. Go ahead. Um, the beef fund should be free from a couple of weeks after Labor Day until Memorial Day because we want people the MOU with the state of New Jersey, since they're giving us transitional aid, will not agree to that. Okay. We've, right. We looked at that numerous times, right? So we, yes. we, okay. <laughs> then I won't. We're doing, we are going to do free parking for the downtown business owners. It's on tonight. Tonight's agenda. So okay. Saturdays, you're going to get to park for free and, and hopefully encourage people to come here on Saturdays and do some shopping. Through the holidays. Through the holidays. Uh, yes. That's what all we can do. If you guys got a problem, go to Trenton and talk to the state. Close it. Motion. Move to close. Second. All in favor? Give me just one more person. What is everybody slow? <laughs> Do you want to reopen the public? Nancy Do you want to reopen the public? on Grand Avenue? I'm sorry. Hold on, Could you hold on, hold on. Am I too we late? We had closed it, so we're going to open it back up. We had closed it because you were making no process. I didn't walk fast enough? No, but you, now you did. So go ahead. Go Come ahead. On. Okay, Nancy Fasano, Grand Avenue. Bought the house. 
several years ago. And after we bought it and closed on it, we got all the deed stuff. And that's when I learned the house was built in 1895. The one next to it as well, built as summer rentals. That's what they were built for. That's what they were used for. And there were some deed restrictions. They're quite interesting. You couldn't have pigs in the backyard. You couldn't have goats. You could have chickens. I think people got their own eggs then. You couldn't have a cow, but you could have some farming there. Well, we don't do that now. People don't come now and want to have their vacation next to a mini farm. So times have changed. Things have changed. The thing that didn't change is the house was built as a summer rental because people want to come here. I urge you to take a little more time on this ordinance because I don't want to see us restrict people who want to come here and enjoy the city. And I don't want to see homeowners being restricted from being able to provide that service. So I urge you to go a little more slower on this. The comments are great. I'd love to hear what everybody has to say, but I really think we can, we're all smart people. We can do this. We can make it work for everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> now a motion to close. Move to close. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. We are on to item F, minutes. I have the executive session minutes of October 25th, municipal council work session minutes of October 25th, municipal council regular meeting minutes of October 25th. Do I have a motion to approve? Move, Move it. Second. Council member Chapman? Abstain. Council member Clayton? Yes. Council member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to item G, consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on the consent agenda are presented collectively to the city council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These items are considered to be routine in nature. There will be no individual discussion of these items. If discussion is desired by one or more council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. We have. 2017, 330 special events applications. 2017, 331, a resolution authorizing a refund due to an overpavement of sewer block 1905, lot 3, 829, Dunlewy Street. 2017, 332, a resolution approving an award of contract for regional contribution agreement project, 915 Sunset Avenue. 2017, 333, a resolution approving an award of contract for regional contribution agreement project 1202 fourth avenue 2017 334 a resolution approving an award of a contract for regional contribution agreement project 700 second avenue 2017 335 a resolution authorizing the disposition of surplus property electronics 2017 336 Resolution approving the disposition of surplus property public works. 2017, 337, accepting a mental health grant. Do I have a motion to approve? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We are on to individual resolutions. Have resolution 2017, 338, a resolution authorizing the transfer of appropriation in the fiscal year 2017. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017 339, a resolution authorizing the payment of bills. Council, Councilperson Chapman will abstain from I-701527. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. On to Resolution 2017-340, authorizing project management and construction coordination <laughs> and inspection services to T&M Associates for 2015 road program. Do I have a motion? 
Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. To resolution 2017 341. A resolution authorizing change orders with Black Rock Enterprises for the road program. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Second. Okay. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. You're on to resolution 2017 342. A resolution amending the metered parking requirements in the downtown and waterfront areas of the city effective every Saturday during the time period from November 25th, 2017 through December 23rd, 2017. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to resolution 2017-343. A resolution authorizing the city of Asbury Park to grant a revocable license agreement for an encroachment over a certain portion of the right-of-way area, airspace, adjacent to the property located at 306, aka 308, Main Street, Block 2508, Lot 9. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to item I, ordinances. These ordinances are for introduction. We have ordinance 2017-41, an ordinance of the city of Asbury Park, <coughs> supplementing traffic and parking regulations, chapter seven, establishing section 7-7.5 general provisions with a public hearing date of December 13th, 2017. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Two. Ordinance for introduction 2017, 42. An ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending and supplementing Chapter 7 of the Code of the City of Asbury Park regarding traffic and parking regulations with a public hearing date of 12-13-17. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Uh, yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We are on to item two, second readings, public hearings. Mayor, before uh, the council opens up the public hearing on ordinance number 2017-43, which amends and supplements chapter 12, section eight, short-term rental regulations, I have a statement I just would like to make to the public. Specifically, on October 10th, 2017, an ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 12, Section 8 of the Code of the City of Asbury Park as it relates to short-term rental regulations was submitted by petition through the initiative process to the municipal clerk by a committee of petitioners. The petition contained a total of 246 signatures. The ordinance proposed by petition relates to the same topic, that is short-term rental of real property within the city of Asbury Park, as set forth in ordinance number 2017-40, which was introduced by the mayor and council on October 11th, 2017, and which is also on this evening's agenda for a second reading and public hearing. The ordinance submitted by the committee of petitioners, however, is significantly different than ordinance number 2017-40 as proposed by the mayor and council. The ordinance submitted by the Committee of Petitioners would, was put forth under the initiative process which is permitted in municipalities like Asbury Park, which are governed under the Faulkner Act. In those municipalities, the voters may propose and initiate any ordinance for adoption in accordance with the procedural requirements set forth in the Act. According to those requirements, the initiative petition must be signed by a specified percentage of the legal voters of the city who voted in the last election at which members of the General Assembly were elected, which at the time of submission of the petition was 2015. Following the submission of the petition, the municipal clerk was required to determine the sufficiency of same within 20 days of the petition's filing or by October 30th, 2017. 
By law, if the petition is found to be sufficient, then the, the municipal clerk shall submit the same to the council without delay, and the initiated ordinance shall be deemed to have had a first reading, and provision shall be made for a public hearing thereon. In our case, by letter which was hand-delivered to the Committee of Petitioners on October 25th, 2017, the municipal clerk provided notice that the petition had been approved or certified and that a public hearing regarding the proposed ordinance, which has now been numbered as 2017-43, had been scheduled for this evening during the regular public portion of tonight's council meeting. By law, the governing body has a period of 20 days from October 25th to consider the ordinance which was proposed by initiative. That would take us to November 14th. It should be noted that this evening's council meeting is the only regularly scheduled council meeting to be held between the date the petition was certified on October 25th and November 14th. By law, if the council shall fail to pass the ordinance requested through the initiative process by November 14th, then the municipal clerk shall submit the same to the voters. Given the number of signatures contained in the peti petition, which were verified as belonging to qualified voters within the city of Asbury Park, which number amounted to 214 of the 246 total signatures contained in the petition, the law provides that should the governing body fail to adopt the ordinance submitted by petition by the November 14th deadline, then the ordinance shall be submitted to the voters at the next general election in accordance with NJSA 40, colon, 69A 192B. The next general election shall be held in November of 2018 or one year from now. Therefore, in accordance with the procedures which I have just recited, Ordinance Number 2017 43 is now being opened up to the public for a public hearing. At the conclusion of the public hearing, the Council may or may not determine to, to take action on that ordinance. The Council's action or inaction on the ordinance will determine whether the matter is put to the voters at the general election in November of 2018. Finally, there will be another public hearing this evening on the other ordinance relating to the same topic of short-term rentals, known as Ordinance 2017-40, which ordinance was introduced by the Mayor and Council on October 11th. I will be making a separate statement regarding that ordinance at the appropriate time. So with that having been said, Ms. Hart Hartsgrove, would you kindly ask for a motion and a vote to open up the public hearing on Ordinance 2017-43, which is the ordinance that was submitted to the Council by petition from the Committee of Petitioners. Do I have a motion to open the public portion meeting on 2017-43, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 12, Section 8, Short-Term Rental Regulations? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. So a number of people already spoke during the open public comment period about uh, the topic of short-term rentals, which covers both the ordinance that was proposed by the petitioners as well as the ordinance that was proposed by the council. But if anyone has any additional comments they would like to make specifically with regard to the ordinance that was proposed by the committee of petitioners through the initiative process, now is the time to do so. Please come to the mic and state your name and address for the record. Hi, Ruth Ann Harrison again, 406th Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, I just wanted to say that I would be more in favor of approving the more liberal um, ordinance and you can always come back down the road if it's not working out and tighten things up a little bit. But I think right now people who um, are not causing any problems with the summer rentals are being blamed for the few that have had problems. And um, that just doesn't seem fair to me. But anyway, that's all I have to say. And thank you again. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth Thank you. Good evening, Pam Lamberton. Um, just a point of information. This particular Chapter 12, Section 8 is an existing ordinance right now. It is the Summer Rental Ordinance. This proposal does away with the summer rental ordinance and replaces it um, almost word for word with the short term rental regulation. So I think when we're done discussing both of these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for a little clarification about what the actual options are at this point. But I think everybody should understand clearly that this first ordinance that we're discussing right now actually removes an ordinance that is on the books now and replaces it with the one that, that you have in your hands, or if you have it in your hands. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Motion to close. It's like all in favor? Aye. Aye. Rita, it's too late, Rita. It's too late. There's another public portion, though, Rita, actually, on the next yeah. ordinance. No, I just wanted to say one thing about this ordinance. But you waited too long, Rita. You, you, you waited. You, you'll get another chance. Yes? Yes. Sit down. And you'll get another Okay, so the public hearing has been closed. Is there a motion to move ordinance number 2017 40 forward? Second. So it's a are motion any, and a second. Are there any comments or questions? No, I mean, I would just reiterate a little bit of what Pam said. In 2014, the city did kind of, for lack of a better word, a quick and dirty ordinance so people could start doing summer rentals. Um, the, the committee or, or Mr. Biondo, um, takes our, takes parts of our summer CO and, um, and adds that to short term rental. Just so we're all clear on terms though, short term rental is less than 30 days. Um, it has nothing to do with 31 days or longer. So, uh, in theory, anyone can rent their property provided they got the right CO for 31 days. Um, Mr. Biondo's ordinance, um, in my opinion, and only my opinion, um, allows for a free-for-all in terms of short-term renting, which means everyone and anyone can do it with the most limited amount of license. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm just saying there's also no restrictions on in the, uh, the ordinance presented by Mr. Biondo on age limit, and the one that has been proposed has an age limit of 21, um, because we feel that there have been instances where youth have taken advantage of the summer ordinance that was in place. And uh, just by way of clarification, Mr. Biondo sent us this ordinance, the one that we're, we're doing second reading tonight, and by way of our attorney, Fred, he sent us a compromise um, in, in that email, in that communication of the compromise. He said that it was that or nothing. So we either agreed to his compromise or it was it was over litigation would begin I, i'm assuming that i'm paraphrasing this email fred can correct me if i say anything wrong we found the compromise not acceptable we didn't offer a counter because again in the email his response was it's this in its entirety or nothing and so just clarifying the process up until now thank you okay now, before you take the roll call, just for clarification purposes, if the council does not approve this ordinance, and regardless of what you do on the next ordinance, this ordinance will go on the ballot in November of 2018. Right. Oh, and, and there's also a technical aspect that I think needs to be addressed, is that under an initiative, um, if this ordinance does pass, if you vote this down, it does pass on the ballot, there is no changes to it for at least three years. The city will be stuck with that ordinance for three years, and the only way to amend it after that is to go back um, to the voters and amend it via um, the November elections through, through the, a, a regular non-binding referendum or non-binding resolution, more or less. So there is no let's try it. It's It will be on the books. It cannot be changed for three years. And then the only way to change it is actually to go back to the voters. And so, Michael, just one one clarification then for me. If we um, if we approve the ordinance that the council had proposed, would that be able to go back for for changes? We can amend it. That, that could be amended. Be amended. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yes. And the prohibition, the three-year prohibition that Mr. Capabianco correctly cited to, is if it if um, when ordinance 2017-40 goes to the voters, if the voters approve it then there basically is a moratorium on your being able to um, amend that for a three-year period of time unless you go back out to the voters and get their approval. Before we take the vote, Fred, I would like you to reply to Mr. Biondo when he was here, mentioned how we were breaking the Faulkner law and he cited a <coughs> Supreme Court decision. Well, that actually is not relevant to this ordinance. That is not. relevant to okay. the next ordinance. Okay. And I was going to make a statement to that regard when we get to the next ordinance. Good enough. Okay. Ready for roll call? Go ahead. Councilman Chapman. No. Councilmember Clayton. No. Councilmember Kendall. No. 
Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? No. Ordinance defeated. The ordinance has been defeated, so Ordinance 2017-43 will be on the ballot in November of 2018. We're now on to Ordinance 2017-40. Okay, and before you open up uh, Ordinance 2017-40, which was the ordinance the council initiated and uh, was introduced on October the 11th, I have a statement that I'd like to read about that as well. With regard to Ordinance Number 2017-40, which was introduced by the Mayor and Council on October 11th and which relates to the same topic as the prior ordinance that the Council just considered, Mr. John Biondo, on behalf of the Committee of Petitioners, spoke publicly at the microphone at the October 25, 2017 Council meeting, asserting that the New Jersey Supreme Court decision in the matter known as Red v. Bauman, 223 New Jersey 87, 2015, effectively prohibits the Asbury Park Mayor and Council from enacting legislation on the same topic as that which is contained in the ordinance which was submitted through the initiative process under the Faulkner Act and which has now been certified by the Municipal Clerk. On behalf of the city, I have had the opportunity to review the Red versus Bauman case, and I respectfully disagree with Mr. Biondo's conclusion in that regard. The issue in Red versus Bauman was whether an initiative petition filed under the Faulkner Act requiring the city of Camden to create and maintain its own police force and prohibiting the municipality from replacing its police force with a county-wide police force unlawfully restricted the municipal governing body's legislative authority or was preempted by certain state statutes. In a lengthy opinion, the New Jersey Supreme Court found that the ordinance proposed by Petition in Camden did not constitute an improper divestment of the municipal governing body's legislative power and also found that it was not preempted by the state statutes referenced. So theoretically, the ordinance proposed by Petition, which was certified by their municipal clerk, could go on the ballot. However, given that three years had passed from the time the initiated ordinance was submitted to and certified by the city clerk in Camden to the time that the Supreme Court made its determination in that case, and given that the intervening circumstances had changed so dramatically, uh, essentially the Camden Police Department had already been dissolved several years ago and replaced with a county police initiative, the Supreme Court found that the ordinance proposed by petition was essentially stale and could not be put before the voters. In that case, there were not competing ordinances at issue. The court was not presented with, nor did it rule upon circumstances where one ordinance was submitted by initiative and a different competing ordinance on the same topic was simultaneously or shortly thereafter adopted by the local governing body. As such, there was no determination made in that case holding that a municipal governing body would be precluded from acting in those circumstances. Based upon my review of this case, I do not find it relevant to the situation presented in Asbury Park and do not consider it to prevent the mayor and council from adopting their own ordinance if they so choose this evening. Finally, as opposed to the referendum statutes which affirmatively impose a stay on an ordinance which is subject to a referendum petition, there is nothing similar in the Faulkner Act statutes governing initiative which imposes a stay on the governing body's ability to adopt an ordinance on a certain topic after an initiative petition has been presented or certified on the same topic. As such, there is no statutory prohibition either which would pre prevent the council from acting. With that said, Ms. Hartsgrove, would you kindly ask for a motion and a vote to open up the public hearing on Ordinance 2017-40? Do I have a motion to open the, the public hearing on Ordinance 2017-40, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 13, entitled Property Improvement and Neighborhood Preservation, Property Maintenance Code of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey, regulating and, it's an and establishing registration requirements for short-term rentals in the City of Asbury Park? Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Please come to the mic. State your name and address for the record. Robert White, past president of Monmouth Ocean Regional Realtors. I'm here tonight representing the uh, Board of Realtors as well as New Jersey Realtors. Um, and we're here tonight uh, in opposition of Ordinance 2017-40 concerning short-term rentals in Asbury Park. Before I begin, we'd like to thank Mayor Moore, Councilman Clayton, and City Manager uh, Capibianco for meeting with us earlier this year to discuss this ordinance. However, there are several concerns that we have with provisions of the ordinance 2017-40, which is why we're here in opposition tonight. While there are provisions of the ordinance we oppose, we also are willing to provide recommendations 
and wish to work, continue working with the city on this matter to come to a resolution beneficial for both those who own properties they rent on a short-term basis, those who visit the city of Asbury Park and its residents, as well as the one that meets the goals of the city with regards to regulating short-term rental properties. We've also submitted um, our comments in writing to the mayor and council in advance of tonight's meeting. First and foremost, Monmouth Ocean Regional Realtors and New Jersey Realtors strongly oppose Section 13-1000.4 of this ordinance, which bans those who own second homes from renting them on a short-term basis, an extremely common practice in Jersey Shore municipalities. Where such a ban would become law in Asbury Park, it would lead to many properties becoming vacant, even foreclosed, since the owners rely on the short-term rental incomes to maintain and pay their mortgages on these properties. In turn, there could reverse all positive effects of Asbury Park as seen in recent years toward becoming a vital destination that people choose to both visit and live in. There would also be a negative effect on the character of the neighborhoods where these homes to become vacant. Instead of banning short-term rental in non-owner occupied properties, Mom <coughs> County Association of Realtors and New Jersey Realtors believe that there should be regulated in the same manner as all other short-term rentals in this ordinance. Secondly, Monmouth Ocean Regional Realtors and New Jersey Realtors are concerned with the section 1000.4E3 of this ordinance, which state that is the home is sold, um, where the home is sold during short-term rentals occur, these types of rentals cannot continue if the new property owner obtains a permit, until the new property owner obtains a permit. If contracts for a short-term rental have already been entered, to, entered into, and then the city states that rentals cannot proceed due to a home sale until a new permit is obtained, there is a question about whether these rentals could be impacted on this ordinance. Moore and New Jersey Realtors recommend that this section of these ordinance be amended to state that if short-term rental property is sold, that these types of rentals be allowed to continue for the remainder of the year in which the sale occurs if the new owner <coughs> wishes to continue renting their property. Third, there is a concern regarding the ban on short-term rental advertising in section 13-1000.8C of Ordinance 2017-40, which again is common practice for either annual or short-term rentals. Monmouth Ocean Regional Realtors and New Jersey Realtors believe that this provision should be removed from the ordinance as even as in the year 2017. Real estate sign advertising is still a valuable tool in sale and rental, be it long-term or short-term of homes. Lastly, Monmouth Ocean Real Regional Realtors and New Jersey Realtors are concerned with section 13-1000.9 of the ordinance as it may allow real estate licensees to be held financially responsible for the actions of short-term tenants they place in rental properties in Asbury Park, which can lead to fines up to $2,000 under the ordinance for actions of tenants outside of their control. We believe it should be made clear that these types of penalties can only be assessed against homeowners not agents if it can be proven that they are specifically aware of the actions of short-term renters and do not take corrective actions against them. Monmouth Ocean Regional Realtors and New Jersey Realtors understand in a short community why the city of Asbury Park felt the need to introduce this ordinance and that the city remains the place for both residents and visitors to call their home and want to visit. However, we feel this ordinance does not match the original intent of where a city started the, this process and will actually do more harm than good to the city as a whole. For these and other reasons, we oppose this ordinance and ask you to vote no tonight on this matter or consider the amendments Moore and New Jersey <coughs> Realtors laid out tonight in our previous correspondence, copies which have been provided to you this evening. Thank you. Michael Nip, 1137 First Avenue. May I ask a few? Go ahead. Where are the copies that were provided to you? Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, may I ask questions of the council? You can talk about the ordinance. Uh, well, I, I just wanted to know, outside of the quick and dirty 2014 ordinance, if there's been any data or research collected specifically related to Asbury Park. I know there's been studies done in other communities, but has there any anything been done here that that relates to how Airbnb and short-term rentals are detrimental to this particular community? Any funded studies or? We didn't fund a study, if that's what you're asking. Uh, is there any study? 
is there any study? Has any, any research or, or data been collected that, that proves that Airbnb and short-term rentals are detrimental to this specific community? No, I think the research that we read was about all surrounding towns, right? So the Wall Street Journal, the Huffington Post, all so the articles out in the last two weeks. But we did have open public sessions where people came yeah. and expressed their views. Opinion is opinion. Okay. Uh, and, and on that point, I will indicate that um, there is case law out there uh, already indicating that uh, the council doesn't need to have actual empirical data in order to take action on an ordinance, uh, so long as there are studies that are done um, and recommended to them by their consultants and employees who have reviewed the matter. Uh, they don't have to have actual studies done regarding uh, Asbury Park in order to move forward. I understand legally and ethically are two different things. Uh, secondly, I, I want to know who, uh, in terms of the long-term uh, rental issue, whose responsibility is it then uh, if you take away the short-term rentals from the community? Whose responsibility is it to provide those long-term rentals? As a short-term renter myself, am I then expected to turn my home over to a long-term renter? Is that sort of where the thinking is, is headed? Well, I mean, I, I object to the first part of your statement. We increased the number of people who could short-term rent by six different categories. So suggesting that we um, are decreasing, I think, is a, is a fallacy. We're actually increasing the number of people who could short-term rent. And I think in terms of long-term affordable housing or housing in Esbury Park, I know that was brought up a number of times, we have a current study going to figure out how much affordable housing. We're revamping our entire master plan to incorporate inclusionary zoning. I think this is one spoke in many spokes in trying to keep the people in this community who want to stay and also provide a great place for other people to come and experience Asbury Park. This is just one of the spokes in that wheel. So but does the council feel that is the that it's the onus of the homeowner to uh, if they're restricted to do the short-term rental to then provide the long-term rental uh, which obviously we need I don't understand your question if I'm being restricted from doing short-term rentals based on this ordinance is the goal then by restricting us to then you know sort of if we're doing this anyway to turn it over to a long-term rental to fill that need in the community it's to keep long-term rentals in the market okay thank you Hi, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. I have an answer for him. He could turn around and sell it and make more money Rita, than a short-term rental. Rita, stay on the ordinance and let's okay. not uh, cross conversations, I just want I, I just want to say that uh, be careful what you wish for. I remember when we had the rooming houses here. They're governed by the state, for one thing. And also, I don't know how the hotel tax works, but if they think in the short-term rentals, I'm sure the state's going to get involved in that too, on the short-term rentals. So they're not going to get away stock free. They might as well just <coughs> follow the ordinance or sell the property and make money. That's what they can do if they don't want to have short-term rentals. That you can't have short-term rentals when you have other people living next door. I'm one of them that lives here all year round. I don't think it's fair every week somebody new coming in. So then they'll be governed by the state of New Jersey and they won't like that because I know those inspectors, they're a lot different than the local ones. So they'll have rooming houses, they have to put numbers on the doors, they have to put locks on the doors. You just can't do these things. I mean like and then I guess you'd have to have more people working to support all these short term rentals and make sure they're in good condition. So it's it's opening up another door. And by the way, Belmar is getting rid of their short-term rentals. They call it the animal law there, and they've gotten rid of it. And that's it. Thank you. <coughs> um, Linda Phillips, 400 Deer Lake Drive. Um, first of all, I support the principle of what the council is doing in trying to protect the city from just being overrun by short-term rentals because it's more um, it gives more money to the people who own the homes and takes away properties that we can have for people who want to live here year-round 
I think we want to, I am a person who's been here for 20 years. I love that it's a community. I want to keep it a community. I don't want to prevent everybody from coming here, but you have to have a compromise. There, are, there, need to be, there needs to be community as well as availability for short-term rental. And the, the, the proposal that the council has made is giving you that. Now, the one thing that I feel unfortunate is that I think the council is willing to compromise and listen to people's um, criticisms and, and possibly make amendments, except that the way the situation has been handled, now they're forced not to. They can't. They're either forced to accept what you've told them or reject it. No compromise is allowed, and now it has to go onto a ballot. And I really believe that is unfair to the rest of us in the city, to the council, the manner in which this has been handled. And I'm going to say for myself personally, I will fight to say no on the ballot initiative in November. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, Paul Ledgecombe, 601 Bangs Avenue. And for transparency, we, my wife and I rent our, our condo out for have rented it out starting in April through next April because I own a business that's expanding and so we live now in um, Robbinsville. So we have rented our place out. So um, my question would be, uh, what's the goal of this ordinance as far as the, the big picture? Are you expecting it to bring more people to town or less people to town? I think what we're trying to do is balance residential neighborhoods and the character of them and then provide opportunities for people to stay here. Um, for lodging, in addition, provide some income to people who are getting priced out so they can remain. Or not even people who aren't being priced out who just want to make a couple extra bucks. Is this something that you guys wish you would have done 10 years ago? I don't think this anybody too was late. here 10 years ago. <laughs> Pardon? No, seriously. I, would well, would I you have here, done this 10 years ago? Because and it I would can be... assure you there weren't a ton of people looking for short term rentals at Asbury Park. But, so, but the point is, how about five years ago? Was five years ago? What's different about today? What's, what's <laughs> seriously different that you want to stop people coming to Asbury Park? Because it will stop people coming on, on a new people. So you'll have the, the, you know, the right people that you want to come who can afford to stay for a month or whatever, but you're, but you're blocking out people who otherwise might come and you know I don't understand what the problem is with a week and having an open um, rental policy like they have at the rest of the shore I mean it just it doesn't you're it's just seems to me that you're legislating something that at this point in time isn't that big of a deal and you haven't done a full comprehensive study on how many Airbnbs there are how many property you what it, what it looks like to me is that you've decided that almost all the properties that are going to come on the market in Asbury Park, some significant portion of them, will be bought by people who will turn them into Airbnbs and it will destroy the community. Why do you believe that? We believe that because... Do you have the facts? Does anybody have the facts? Did anybody actually bother to look at the facts? How many houses sold last year? How many are Airbnbs? How many sold the year before? How many are Airbnbs? How many will be sold next year? And how many will be Airbnbs? What is, the, what is the extent of the problem that you're really going after? I don't think you know. I think, you're, I think that you feel like you really need to do something. I, I think you're all really good people. I feel like you need to do something. I, there's, there are, without a doubt, incredible abusers and people who are really bad, bad folks who are coming to town. But look at your town, you know? So, the town is, is encouraging. <laughs> A lot of people who come and drink and party, and that's you know. So if you want to really, if you want to do that, you know, think about the cheese. And so where, you know, why are the people who you think are the bad people coming to town? You know, and I, I just think you're going about this in all the wrong way. And I wish, and I know you've all decided, so it's kind of past the point of doing anything about it. But it, it, I think you're just throwing out the baby with the bathwater. So I'm gonna again take some. What we're trying to do is be proactive. We have, we have looked at what's happened in other cities, in other towns where it has taken 
rent, long-term <laughs> rental units off the market. It has driven up rents. It has driven up the cost of houses so that the people who are coming here who would like to be able to afford to cannot. So that the millennials who are working across town can't find a place to rent in Asbury Park. They have to go elsewhere. For people who have lived here for numbers of years don't have the same opportunities. We're not trying to destroy the short-term rental market. We, we encourage it. We love it. We like people coming into town. What we're trying to do is balance the needs of our tourists with the needs of our residents. We want Asbury Park to be the best it can be. We don't want to punish anybody. That is not the goal of this ordinance. The or goal of this ordinance is to protect the property, to protect the integrity and the character of our city. And so that does not become a city where at the end of the day, at the end of the summer, there are a lot of dark holes in that your neighbor, you don't have one. I, I, right now, just drive around town. Look at, look at bank, drive, drive by my property, drive by my building, 601 Bangs Avenue, above Pascal and Sapin. It is dark. There is not, there's maybe one light in one window. We lived at, we lived um, at 550 Cookman. There were maybe four people who lived there. There's, drive by, drive by almost anywhere. There is not, the people who are living here are, they're not here. They're just not here. The how, this is, this is a speculative market. People are buying. I, we had a neighbor at 550 Cookman who was renting and she lived in, in Chatham and if we saw her once a summer, that was a lot. And so how does that help the, how does that help the city? How does, you're, you are going to have this happen no matter what. My brother, my brother lives in Marin County, north of San Francisco. No one can afford to live there. And there is no short-term rentals. There's not a single one. And there's, when you're in a place that people want to live, they're going to, they're going to price up real estate. And Airbnbs is not the main source of it. You, you'd have to come up with some other way of, of telling people who, you know, punish them for buying here and never being here. <coughs> I don't know what the method of doing that is, but, you know, somehow, if you really, really want to do that, add some tax on to people who just want to invest and not live here and use that money for affordable housing for the people who you want to help. Come up with, you know, there's some other solution, cool. but dumping on Airbnbs I don't think is your answer. Thank you. My name is Thomasina Shanks, and I'm a longtime resident of this area, uh, Second Avenue. Um, I'm sort of like favoring the summer rentals, you know, the short term, because Asbury has always been a short area, and they had places i remember as a kid people used to come here in buses and i used to look and i used to see them all over you you could see people coming to asbury park and it was always some place that was beautiful as a child the beaches was packed people was coming in and then the winter time it slowed down so that means that when the summertime came, we looked forward to see all the people. And we knew that they were short term. We knew that some of them came in for a week, two weeks, a month. But it was beautiful. To cut that out, I don't think so. I think that some of us, I've been living here a long time. And I, I saw this place when it was beautiful. I saw it when it was ugly. Now I see it coming back in a way that I see it's beautiful and I would love to see this town, not just say the residents, we got a lot of nice residents here too, but don't cut out the beautiful part about the short term because this way we have nice, nice people coming in town and then they leave. So I don't know, I don't know what else to say. Pam Lamberton, I have a bunch of some dis recent 321 sunset. Yes, I have a bunch of disjointed thoughts. Forgive me. 
I totally do disagree with Mr. 601 Bangs Avenue. Um, I don't come to the same conclusion that, that you did. But respectfully, this ordinance and what the council is trying to do is not eliminating short-term rentals. It is not eliminating summer rentals. It is trying to put, as Councilwoman Clayton said, is trying to put some balance and control on it before it gets out of hand. Um, Mr. 601, it's been, it's really just been the past two years that has become evident that people are trying to capitalize on the short-term rental situation here in the city. Um, the council calls this, their proposal, a compromise, and I want you to realize it is a compromise because the extreme is what Bradley Beach and Ocean Township have done, which is to ban short-term rentals that we could easily be here tonight discussing an ordinance that the council proposed that said there will be no short-term rentals, period, in the city of Asbury Park. That is not what they are proposing. They are promoting the idea of short-term rentals, of summer rentals. We all agree that that's a good thing, but in moderation. Um, I did not know that the council had reached out to Mr. Viando um, to speak to him personally about a compromise. I also reached out to Mr. Biondo personally. I ex exchanged several emails with him, told him them, there must be a middle ground. His, his ordinance is one extreme, um, and he feels that the council ordinance is another extreme, although if, if they were saying banning short-term rentals, that would be the other extreme. I know, this, I know these people on the council, and they do, they do listen, and they will compromise if you bring them some, something concrete and say, how about this, how about that? Um, Mr. Biondo, interestingly, Ms. Quinn, his reaction to my proposal, I, I said, please, let's get together one-on-one, -on -one, and I will hammer this out with you. I helped rewrite the city's administrative code, for those of you who don't know, so I have a little bit of experience with this kind of thing. I said, well, let's work this out together. His response to me was exactly what you said. He said, no, there is no compromise. It's my way or the highway. So he was not interested in talking about it. I hope he watches this on APTV, too. <coughs> um, I thought that the realtor, the gentleman from the Realtors Association, had some really good suggestions for the kinds of compromise that, for those of you who feel that the existing ordinance, the proposed ordinance is too restrictive, those are the kind of compromises that I was going to suggest to Mr. Viando. Well, how about this? How about that? Um, so there, there are things to do, to do to the ordinance that maybe would make it more acceptable for the large number of uh, <coughs> landlords in this situation. Um, I think what uh, Councilwoman uh, said about wanting to keep the diversity in the city, keep it, keep the urban vibe. This is what we love about Asbury Park. Um, and we want to make sure there's a balance of housing. If you read the preamble to the council's proposed Shh. ordinance, it does have some long range, um, thoughtful uh, acknowledgments of the housing situation in the city of Asbury Park and how this particular ordinance can actually move that forward. Um, there have been articles recently about the homeless situation on the West Coast in Marin County, north of San Francisco, wherever, but especially the West Coast, um, where people making $20,000 a year are living in their cars because there is no housing stock. No housing stock. Now, I'm not saying it's short-term rentals, but in the long term, Asbury Park has to consider all those housing options for all the people in the city of Asbury Park or we're going to lose that balance, we're going to lose the diversity, the city's just going to get a whitewash and nobody's going to be happy. Um, there are two properties that I know of, people have spoken at the microphone about um, that are sort of caught in a limbo area where they were allowed to rent out their properties in 2016 then they were told in 2017 they, couldn't, they were not eligible to rent out. Both of these ordinances will allow them to rent again in 2018 or whenever the ordinances go into effect. Um, I, would, I would just ask the council to keep those properties in mind and if there's some kind of something you can do to, to 
rescue those. I think there's only two people that that happened to. Um, also, an interesting fact, um, the sh properties that are uh, rehabbed and open for short-term rental use only are considered by the federal government for purposes of the census vacant properties. I don't really understand what the ramifications of that could be, but it doesn't sound good to me to have many vacant properties. I don't want any, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have a horse in this race. I live in a condo um, that, that prohibits short-term rentals, but I live in this city and I really want to see the proaction that this council is taking on this issue um, to, to make sure that short-term rentals don't destroy the fabric of the community. Um, I, I ask now, what are our options? Can you, can you table it some more and talk to the, the realtor <coughs> organization about some compromises? Maybe we can get Mr. Biondo to the table or if there's somebody else who feels as strongly as he does um, to sit down and, and talk about it. Or do you, do you have to take a vote on it tonight? I can answer that question, Pam. Um, the council does not have to, by law, adopt this ordinance tonight or take any action on it tonight. That'll be a decision for the council to make after they close the public hearing. I don't know. Um, Conrad Nebley, 1218 Sunset Avenue. Um, I have a lot to say about this matter, and I have nothing to say about this matter. <laughs> I do short-term apartment rental in Harlem, and I hesitate to do it here. Um, it has been a blessing to me. It has been a blessing to the city because I support, but my clients coming, I call them clients, they support the businesses, the restaurants, the, um, the economy of the city. And I t I'm, I'm very, very, um, uh, trying to find a word, um, hands-on with my clients because I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my neighbor, you know, um, and so they are transient, but, and they come back, um, many of them. I just want to state that as a fact that that's what I do, short-term apartment rental. Um, one of the things that as, as I'm listening here in Asbury Park, I'm listening, and I really, really ask you guys as council to really listen the room and to listen what has been going on around this subject because I, I, I think that if you make a decision to uh, come with this new proposal that it's going to create some separation in our city and I think the best way for us to resolve this is to be in more dialogue it is because in New York City, it's a big issue as well. A lot of legal stuff. Um, and so I don't particularly have the answers, but the, the only thing that I can see is for various uh, different kind of mindset people coming together, maybe creating a committee where people, where, where we're trying to find out the best way you guys as a council hear it in a particular way see it in a particular way and they're opposing uh, positions let's really engage on like what can we come to an agreement on because I really feel that if y'all really approve this that's it's going to create more of a separation we're working so hard at being a diverse community with, where you know, I don't want to see the bridge that's, to me, this small with bridging the diversity gap in the city being no bridge at all. You know, so I really, I really request that you guys, and you may have decided, I don't know, because I can't read your old mind, you may have decided you're going to do a particular thing, but I'm asking you now 
to really, really look within your soul, within your spirit, to, to, to really be a part, be the leaders, and you guys are leaders, so I'm not saying that to be nasty or anything like that, but be the extraordinary leaders that I know that you guys are, to really come to a, a consensus so we can work together on this. We can really work, I feel we can work this. But if a decision is made tonight, I, don't, I really feel it's gonna be damaging to our city, and I don't wanna see anything that's gonna pull us down, because you guys have been doing some great work. Everybody in this community does great work, but I don't think that we're there at making a decision. That's my personal feeling, and I needed to get up and say that. You know, because look, you got people here. Oftentimes, there's so few people here. This is a full house. So, it's, it says something, and um, thank you for the work, and thank everybody for coming out and sharing their positions. No, to me, there's no right, there's no wrong. We all have a particular way of seeing it, but. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Kathleen Galano. I'm at 405 Monroe Avenue, but I'm also a realtor with Remax Gateway on Grand Avenue. And I just wanted to reiterate a point that was brought up earlier, and that is um, the 13-1000.9 on violations and penalties. So tenants and homeowners really rely on us to um, <coughs> find tenants for their homes, and also the, te the pr prospective tenants rely on us to find them best places. Um, with this proposed section of the ordinance, it's really going to render it impossible for us to do our job. Um, the fine, it says here, $2,000 per violation per day. So any realtor really can't take on that responsibility to place tenants in homes with um, the possibility of those violation uh, charges. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. It's a second ordinance, so I think you can. You yeah. can get yeah. up as many times as yeah. you want. Okay, don't sit yeah. down. Um, <coughs> I'm not that tall. Um, part of what I want to see Your is name a question. and address. Oh, Linda Phillips, 400 Deal Lake Drive. Um, can I ask a question of the lawyer? Like, I'm, I'm a little confused at this point about the process because I think what Conrad said is wonderful and valid in, its, in itself, but I'm not sure at this point if the council is even allowed to do that because of what's happened with this other ordinance which now you either have to say, you had to say yes or no to, and if you didn't say yes and it could only be that, there's no negotiating that, then that would be adopted. Or because you said no, now it automatically goes on the ballot. No matter what you do now, if you decide you wanna compromise and do what the realtor, um, the suggestions that the realtor made, it wouldn't make a difference because this other ordinance is still going on the ballot in, in November, right? Am right. I not right? Yeah. Right. Yes, the first so, ordinance is going on the ballot in November unless the committee of petitioners were to withdraw it. Okay, so I guess I want to make a plea to the people who support that other resolution and say that I think that the council would be willing to negotiate. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I shouldn't be speaking for you, but I mean, here's a realtor who's asking you to make some changes and it doesn't matter what changes you make, this other ordinance comes first and has to be dealt with and there's no chance to make compromise at this point. And that's what I think is unfair. I don't think. Well, I can clarify that as well. Okay. So the first ordinance is going on the ballot in November, right. regardless, unless the committee of petitioners were to withdraw okay. it. The council still has the ability to adopt this ordinance tonight or at a later meeting or to revise this ordinance and go through this process again or to adopt this ordinance tonight and then amend it at a later date. But regardless, that first ordinance is going to be voted on by the voters in November, unless again, it's withdrawn by the committee of petitioners. And depending upon the vote that takes place in November, that could then supersede right. what ordinance the council adopted, either in its initial format or in a revised format. Okay. Thank so you. then- But the council still can- Right. Modify so it say, after tonight think, if they adopt it tonight, okay. or I'm hold off tonight I, and modify it and adopt it at a later date. Right. I, th I think I'm going to say that I support the intention and the basic idea of what the council's ordinance is. I think 
you should be open to some of the suggestions that people have made of, of some possible compromises. And I wish that somebody could talk to the other people and get that other thing off the ballot in November so that we could go forward and have a compromise resolution that the majority of, all of us have decided together we can support each other on. Okay, Nancy Fasano again. I'm not going to talk about goats and pigs this time. Um, we bought our house about five years ago, and we lived in it was an old wreck. It was illegal apartments, a broken down podiatrist office, and a broken down chiropractor's office. Major money we spent renovating it. We lived, we turned it into two units at the suggestion of Paul Vale, who has left. Um, and I was told at the time, you don't want to have more than, I was going to do like three bedrooms and three bedrooms, and then they're telling me, oh, you're going to get people in there that you're going to have trouble getting back out. And you're going to get into problems with, and they're going to move in. One of the, one of the sides is almost five bedrooms. And I really don't want to put that up as a regular <coughs> rental because I don't want to deal with people moving all their friends in and getting back into that illegal rental situation that it had to begin <coughs> with. And so we lived in one part, we put the other one up as a summer rental, everything was going fine. Now another thing, people told me at the time, you're only going to get weekends, you're never going to get anybody coming for a week. Nobody comes to Asbury for a week. Well, they were totally wrong. People want to be here for a week. I've had no trouble in the last five years renting that house again and again on a weekly rental. And since we love Asbury Park so much and we had such much fun renovating this house, we were able to find another house that we were also renovated. And actually that's the one we spend most of our time in. It's three blocks away. I take care of my house. I'm there. I'm all the time. I pay attention to my clients. I have had wonderful guests. Never a problem with anybody, except for one guy who threw up on the floor. <laughs> but, and I don't rent to, I learn not to rent to those kind of people. Uh, I like the, basically like the ordinance. I don't think we should rent anyone under 21. In fact, I want somebody to be 25 to sign my contract or whatever I, happen to use with Airbnb. Um, if, you, if the landlord, like myself, is paying attention and doing a good thing, I think I should be considered. Now, I know you can't make a rule just for me, but it's not my primary residence. We still have a residence in upstate New York because that's where my husband's working for taxes and finances and everything else. That's the way we do it. I can't even vote in uh, November unless I change all that between now and then. But it works for us to do this, and we're probably going to end up living here full time. We, we volunteer. We do things in the town. <coughs> but like I said, I know you can't make a rule just for me because I'm somebody here and I'm participating in the town. My problem is with the principal residence. It's not my principal residence. But I'm a good person. I contribute. I, I think there's got to be a little bit of gray in there somewhere. And if you, if you go along with what the realtor guy said here, I think I'll be okay. <coughs> but um, I think you have to look at people as an individual and not just make the law so restrictive that there's no room to have exceptions. So I think that's my whole piece. And Pam who said, she, she was talking about me, one of the people. I rented my house in 2016 with a summer ordinance. I couldn't do it this year because the zoning department decided that it was a two family, not a one family, and therefore I didn't qualify. But the year before they let me do it. And then they wouldn't let me do it in 2017. So every single weekend, Every single weekend or week when somebody changed, I had the $100 to the code department and they came over, looked at my house again, walk around, turn the water on, turn the lights on, check the electric, check the stove, uh, check the smoke detectors, even the 10-year smoke detectors, they all work. Um, 
Every single week I had to do that. Well, you're not even going to let me do that next year. I didn't like it, but with the new ordinance, I can't do it at all. So I'm just like shut out, and I've been a good person for the last five years. So I really, I think you need a little bit of gray area in there somewhere. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Felicia Simmons, Sula Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, again, I'm gonna say as a lifelong, um, just real quick, so what she said, a gray area. Well, I live in Asbury Park my life, and if you give an inch, they'll take a mile. We've had plenty of gray for a very long time. Um, and um, some of the issues that we deal with and have done with and the board, the council have done with is, is, is a lot of gray area. So the question I keep hearing is, um, first is this question to the lawyer. There's a difference between summer rentals and short-term rentals. And um, I hear people speak about it. And then also my question is, if, Again, pretty much to what she was saying, if she doesn't live in a house, and a house is in a, a residence of any sort, um, doesn't that make it commercial? That's just you know a question for me. Doesn't that make it commercial and in a whole different kind of tax kind of bracket or help tax system? And then also my mind was just spinning after hearing what Rita said. When we did used to have um, rooming houses, again, I said I lived between Asbury, Neptune, and Bradley Beach my whole life. Um, it, it is governed by the state. They have all kinds of state things that you have to post at the door and kind of things that you have to come in and kind of do. Wouldn't that change the whole kind of premise and also put these homeowners who bought these, per, um, these properties into a whole new different type of arena where they're kind of superseded um, the city council into a whole new, again, commercial industry. So that's just my question sitting there thinking about. Um, I don't really know. I, I'm asking the difference again between a clarification, as I do know what the difference of short term rentals and summer rentals. Um, I think that a lot of people, because I hear people saying things that they will qualify under the new ordinance, they're already in. So I, do, I don't understand the difference. What's, what's the, the, I understand the difference, but I think people need the um, clarification. So the, um, the ordinance that a prior council adopted in 2014 regarding establishing a summer rental CFO was done in order to make it easier for property owners to rent their properties out um, during the course of the summer for short periods of time. Right now, the way the city code is written, anytime there's a transfer in occupancy of your home, you're required to pay a fee and have uh, a new CFO issued anytime there's new tenants, even if it's on a short-term basis. But in order to encourage summer rentals, uh, the ordinance in 2014 said, if you get this license, which is good only between Memorial Day and Labor Day, then you pay one price and you get one C of O, and it's good for the entire summer, and you can rent it out as many times as you want to between Memorial Day and Labor Day, pay one price, one C of O. And that is the ordinance that is being repealed right now by either of the two ordinances, the ordinance that was proposed by Mr. Biondo, as well as the ordinance that's being proposed by the council. Um, the short-term rental market and Airbnbs it wasn't as much of a phenomena as it is now. And now the determination has been made that the council sees a need to regulate short-term rentals and not just concentrate on summer rentals and the the ordinance that is currently before the council is similar in the sense that if you qualify for short-term rental of your property then you like with the summer rental ordinance can apply for a license and pay one price and get a license that's good for a whole year and have multiple occupancies during the the course of that year and not have to get a new CO every time you have new occupants and pay a new fee. Uh, but you have to qualify to be entitled to short-term rent your property based upon the criteria set forth in the ordinance. And it would basically take the place of the, the existing summer rental license. That would no longer exist. And the definition of short-term rental in the ordinance is any period of time up to 30 days. So that's, that's what constitutes a short-term rental under the, uh, the ordinance that's proposed.
Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. Um, I've been listening to both sides and like Conrad and Pam and a few other people said, um, as the president has been coming to the council meetings for the last 17 years and missing very few, it's interesting to see so many people here on one note and not for the betterment of the city as a whole. The whole idea most people came here was to make this a better community. Okay, if you want to run a bed and breakfast, then get a license for a bed and breakfast. I thought you guys were trying to deal with Airbnb and keeping transients from coming in and out so we have a sense of community. I happen to be at Rita's house many times. There's people coming and going all the time. Lights are on three o'clock in the morning, lights are on seven o'clock in the morning. When you have people who that are living in the house full time or full time summer, they tend to keep, have a schedule and you get used to it. You never know what's going on when people are coming and going. And if people want to run a bed and breakfast and have multiple buildings, that are Airbnb, I think they should be running them like a business, contribute to the Chamber of Commerce, should get mercantile license, should pay taxes on it, and they should pay their fair share in real estate tax as a commercial unit. Because if you go far and far, I mean far beyond Asbury Park, most people would never consider renting out a spare bedroom. And when Pam brought up about Ocean Township, I thought I read that in the coaster too, that they don't want um, um, Airbnb. I didn't know about Bradley Beach, but I went on the internet a few weeks ago. I was surprised how many people, towns are against it. I mean, you're willing to work out the situation. And I strongly think it should be primary resident. You rent out a spare bedroom. If you want to rent out your whole house, then maybe you should pay a different real estate fee tax. You know, you want to run a business, pay real estate tax based on a business. That's the way I see it. Thank you. Thank you. Close. Motion closed. Second. Hi, uh, John Nash, 301 First yeah. Avenue. First of all, I want to thank you guys for your hard work on this issue. I know it's been a uh, lots of uh, it's, it's been a lot of work. I think the, pr the proposal that it will be on the ballot next November. <coughs> if you guys don't want that to pass, I think you should table this, rework your proposal and make it more liberal because if that passes, we're stuck with it for three years, whether we like it or not. I'm, I'm for it, but I'm just saying, whether you like it or not, we're gonna be stuck with it for three years. If you give us something more liberal, you can always go back and change it and tweak it. But the way it is now, we're gonna be stuck with something or we all might like it, or you guys who are have a, a more collaborative interest in the whole community, you get to speak to everybody um, I think it would benefit everybody if you waited on the proposal and came up with something that would we could still change if we needed to. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And Motion to close. Motion to close. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The public hearing on 201740 has been closed. Do I have a motion to move 2017-40? Move it. Second. And then, Melody, I'm just going to say okay. a couple of things before we vote. So um, this has obviously been a uh, passionate discussion. Um, one of the things I want to take a few minutes to clarify is that we are rushing. We have probably, I think Brett mentioned it, been talking about this for at least a year, if not a year and a half. We put together a committee around February, March to start doing some research on it. The committee was me, Yvonne, Rob McEwen, our planner, Michelle Alonzo, and Michael Capabianco, our city manager. We held two public meetings, one in April uh, 2016, one in June 2016. We met with not only the Monmouth County Realtors, we had a separate meeting and met with local realtors who uh, we identified did a lot of business in Asbury Park. We met with Airbnb. We met on their policy, their standards, and their regula regulations and implementations. We met with the League of Municipalities. We met with the League Legislative Committee on Land Use and discussed statewide legislation. We met with the business community, and then we met with countless, countless city residents on both sides of the issue. So this is not something we thought of last night. This is something we both internally thought about and then also talk to the community and we're on opposing sides. 
Um, so just to be clear on that fact. So one of the things that we learned throughout these meetings and, and, and kind of took in was that living in Asbury Park is expensive, right? And getting more ex and more expensive. And what we wanted to do is kind of take an, or or an ordinance that dealt with living, with living in Asbury Park being expensive and also couple it with some of our goals, which were to, you know, make sure you kept the residential neighborhoods residential that you knew your neighbors and that we wanted to rein in essentially these pseudo hotels right these places that are being bought for the sole purpose of short-term renting nobody is ever living there nobody there is no intention of anyone ever living there and you'll have different neighbors every weekend so one of the things we wanted to do was rein that in um, another thing that we absolutely wanted to do and that we identified continuously at this at these meetings was about, and Rob can correct me, 30 people got the summer CO. That's it. I mean, we have a tremendous amount of more people in this room who maybe were short-term renting without a, a summer CO, but about 30, 20 people, 20 people got the summer CO. So we certainly wanted to encourage more people to take advantage of this. So <laughs> after meeting with all these groups, determining that you know yearly rentals were becoming really hard for people to find, knowing that every one of our plans from our current master plan to our master plan that we're working on because we're at the 10-year master plan stage all call for home ownership Springwood Ave, Scattered Site, Washington Ave all of our plans call for home ownership so we wanted to stick with both those plans and the current master plan and as I said before this is a spoke in the wheel to keep Asbury Park I believe the way that everybody in this room wants to keep it which is quirky and diverse and fun so having said that what we did was tremendously increase the number of people who could short-term rent we added the caveat it has to be your primary residency to get rid of the LLCs, to get rid of the pseudo hotels, and to get rid of the people doing B&Bs B not licensed. So we said this has to be your primary residency. Previously, only a single family house could short term rent. And what we said was, you know what, as very expensive, we want, it, we want as many people to be able to short term rent. So we're going to expand that category to condos to a room in your house, which you previously were not allowed to do, to one unit and a two family if you lived in it, one unit and a multi-family if you lived on the premises. And if these people from 2017 no longer qualified, right? And we, and we eliminated them. We said, you know, they no longer qualified under this ordinance. We didn't want to harm them. So we said, well, grandfather, you all in and put you in under this ordinance to make sure that people who lived here primarily and the people who've been doing it for years and years and years, and it's never been a problem, that they all had an opportunity to short-term rent. So we took all of that and we put that into this ordinance. And we said pseudo hotels, B&Bs that are not licensed but are basically B&Bs, and residential neighborhoods, and this is what we came up with. So is it perfect? Absolutely not. Can it be amended over time? Absolutely. This wasn't something that was um, quick and dirty like the 2014 ordinance. This was a really thoughtful process. I think Airbnb actually says this was a really thoughtful process about us. And I'm gonna, beyond the countless articles over the course of the last year we've been reading, in the last two weeks, Wall Street Journal, we find that Airbnb listings are more highly correlated with higher house prices and rental rates in neighborhoods with fewer owner occupiers. That is the key points in our analysis and it's consistent with the hypothesis. The reasons Airbnb increases rental rates is not that non-homeowner occupiers are taking homes out of the long-term market and putting the units into short-term market. In contrast, if the owners are living in their home, they are less likely to rent it to a long-term tenant. Instead, they are just using Airbnb to rent their home while they were away on vacation or share in room. Hunt, Huff, Huffington Post. The new kind of Airbnb power gentrification comes with all the down, downsides of traditional gentrification. Home prices and rents are going up. Lower income residents and people of color are moving out with fewer upsides. The more Airbnbs in city and higher rents get for local residents. 
Uh, you don't have to be an economist to understand what's happening. Apartments that used to be long-term tenants are furnished and listed on Airbnb. Local home buyers are competing with out-of-town out investors looking to cash in. You're shrieking the, the supply and not the demand. So the only thing I would ask, however this ordinance goes tonight, is no, we absolutely thought this through. We, we could potentially amend it. Nobody's saying that we wouldn't amend it, but that our priority is to keep year-round tenants in Asbury Park, to keep Asbury Park the way that I think everybody here probably wants it to stay, which is a super cool, interesting, diverse, quirky town, and provide housing for all of those people. Short-term rentals is just one, one of the spokes in the wheel that we are trying to do. And Yvonne can clean up anything that I didn't <laughs> say right. <laughs> I think you covered it all. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Okay. Roll call. Roll call. Councilman Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance adopted. Motion closed. Motion to adjourn.